welcome to Simultaneous Equations video 2. In this video we're going to investigate graphical solutions to simultaneous equations. We'll look at how to solve simultaneous equations graphically, we'll have a look at some examples, and we'll also understand what a solution to a simultaneous equation means. So let's start by looking at example 1, and then we can investigate through this example. So I have a simple simultaneous equation, 2y plus 3x equals 8, I'm going to call this equation number 1, and y equals 2x minus 3, and I'll call that equation number 2. So let's start by having a little bit of play with these equations. I'm going to start over here with equation number 1, and you'll note that 2y plus 3x equals 8 needs to be rearranged if I want to sketch this using gradient intercept form. So I'm going to start by subtracting 3x. And that will give me 2y equals negative 3x plus 8. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And that will give me y is equal to negative 3 on 2x plus 4. So that's my first rearrangement. And you'll notice from this rearrangement that I have my m value there and my y-intercept here. So my gradient is negative 3 over 2 and my y-intercept is 4. In the second equation, I have a simple m value is equal to 2 and y-intercept, which is equal to negative 3. So that's already set out for me. So now I'm going to sketch these two linear equations. But first, I'll need to set up my axes. So I'm going to set my axes up by having a scale that goes up in twos on the y-axis, 2, 4, 6, and ones on the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's down to negative 1 and down to negative 2 there and negative 4 because I'll need to go down to negative 3. So there's my scale. Now I'm going to do the first one in green, which is this one here. And you'll notice that this first one, I have a y-intercept of 4. So I'll mark that point. And then from there, I have a gradient of negative 3 on 2, which means as I go along 1, I go down 1.5, which takes me to here, 2.5. A long one, down one and a half. A long one, down one and a half. A long one, down one and a half. So on and so forth. And of course, if I go backwards one, I go up one and a half. So I get a pattern there. And now I can sketch this graph by just simply doing a line between the first and the approximate last points. And there's my linear function. The second one, which I'll do in purple, has a gradient of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. So I'll start with my negative 3, and then I'll go along 1 and up 2. 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 So on and so forth again. And I can sketch this one just by using my linear line tool again. So there's my two functions. Now I'm going to produce a circle in red, which will indicate where these two functions meet. Right there. And this is a very special point. The point where they meet is the solution to my simultaneous equations. So this solution in this case is clearly 2, 1. So I have 2 on the x-axis and I have 1 on the y-axis. So 2, 1 is a coordinate. Or x equals 2 and y equals 1. And it's really important now that we go through and just verify this solution. So first of all, in equation number 1, I get 2 times y, which is 2 times 1, plus 3 times x, which is 3 times 2. That's equal to 2 plus 6, which equals 8, which is what we expected. So it works for equation number 1. And in number 2, I get this. On the right hand side, I get 2 times 2, that's my x, minus 3, and that's equal to 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. And I wanted it to equal 1 because y is equal to 1. So it works in equation number 2 as well. So we've started by sketching our two functions, then we've found the point of intersection, we've written that down as our solution, and we've verified our solution. So let's look at one more example now. Example number 2, x minus 3y equals 9, number 1, and y plus x equals 1, number 2. 
We start by working with number 1 and rearranging into our gradient intercept form. x minus 3y equals 9. I'll subtract x from both sides. Minus 3y equals negative x plus 9. Then I'll divide by negative 3, leaving me with y equals 1 third x minus 3. Secondly, I'm going to rearrange number 2, which is a little bit simpler. x plus y equals 1. And I'm going to subtract x from both sides, leaving me with y equals negative x plus 1. Now in blue, I'm going to set up my scale. I'm going to go up in 1s, which will mean I'm going down in 1s. And I'm going to also go up in 1s along the horizontal axis as well. Now in green, I'm going to draw my green graph number 1. It has a gradient of 1 third and a y-intercept of negative 3. So here's the y-intercept first of all at negative 3. And a gradient of 1 third means that as I go along 1, I go up a third. Now a third is quite hard to plot in this case. But if I go along 3, I go up 1. If I go along 3, I go up 1. Which again is off my graph, so I'll just mark 2 thirds up. So you'll see that this green one starts about here and works its way up to there. Just playing around in our bottom right hand corner. And then our second function in purple has a y-intercept of 1, but a gradient of negative 1. So I go along 1 and down 1. Along 1, down 1. Along 1, down 1. Along 1, down 1. So on and so forth. And again I can sketch this function by connecting the dots. There's my purple function. And in red, I'll show you where these two meet. Right there. And that point, my graph's a little bit inaccurate, but that point is 3, comma, negative 2. Which means that x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. And of course we test that, first of all in 1, and we get 3 minus 3 times negative 2 which is equal to 3 plus 6, and that's equal to 9, which is what we're hoping. And then we test it again in with number 2, which is 3 plus negative 2, which equals 1, and again, that's what we're hoping. So we've got our two functions, we've solved them simultaneously, and we can see our simultaneous solution. And that's it for video 2. All the best.